How's it going everybody? Today we are going to talk about a frame within a frame composition. What exactly is a frame within a frame? First of all, a frame within a frame occurs when you use a visual element in the image to frame the primary subject. The purpose of using a frame within a frame is to help move the viewer's eye towards that subject. So in this case, the outside edges of this picture act as frame one. Your secondary frame acts as frame number two, uh, which helps you to understand that this is your focal point right here. Uh, it helps give your focal point more visual weight. It helps guide the viewer's eye to your focal point. In this example here, we're looking through a tunnel. Uh, the tunnel is acting as our frame and is framing uh, the person walking through right here. So now in this case here, the, the photographer actually used a frame uh, to frame the models in the picture. Uh, and in, in my opinion, this was a good choice. I think without that frame, I think the rest of the shot would be pretty boring because you would just have the, the landscape on the sides here. And there's not anything super interesting about this landscape necessarily. I mean, other photographers would have maybe done this at a sunrise or sunset. It's just a blue sky. Um, there's no like palm trees or anything. So I generally, this is a pretty plain photo, but this kind of frame that they've put into the shot really helps make the, the photo look a little bit better. It looks a little bit more professional because of it. I think this is a little bit better example of that though, uh, where they've taken the photo. It looks like I assume that this is like the side view mirror of a car or um, maybe a motorcycle, some sort of vehicle. And uh, you know, it's a wedding portrait right here. Um, and it just looks more interesting because we as the viewer have a lot more stuff to look at. Um, we can look at the reflections down here, which kind of guide our eyes this way towards our focal point, which is obviously the mirror. And inside the mirror, we've got the couple kissing and it just makes the, the photo again look more interesting. Having the background again blurry also helps. I know that not everybody has that option on their phone, but if you do have that option, it's maybe a good one to use for this project. Now your focal point doesn't necessarily have to be inside of that frame. So in this case, uh, we've got the model sitting on the windowsill, uh, looking out the window. It's created kind of a setting, you know, we can tell we're like in an apartment or something. And, you know, she's looking out the window. The, the window is our secondary frame. Something else that's interesting about this photo is that they have a pretty symmetrical composition overall, which makes the photo more fun to look at, aside from the fact that it's a frame within a frame composition. Another thing that helps make this photo interesting is that they've matched all the colors. And so like you can see the colors of the drapes, the colors of the wall, kind of this beige color scheme. You see that in the buildings back here, you see that in her clothing. So having that unified color scheme along with the frame within a frame composition, along with having a symmetrical composition, along with having depth of field in the background, all of those elements help to make this photo look more professional. The more of those types of elements that you have, good lighting, good composition, uh, color schemes are all matching. The more you have all of those ingredients, better off you'll be as far as um, trying to make a professional looking photograph. Now throughout the years of teaching, I've had a ton of students who tell me that they want to be makeup artists or cosmetologists um, um, or, or work in that profession in some way shape or form. And I think that if that's your goal, being able to take good pictures of the people you put makeup on would be a good idea. It's really going to help you in the future uh, because the better you can represent your craft, and it doesn't have to just be makeup art, it could be anything. Um, let's say you're a drawer or painter. Let's say you make furniture, let's say you work on cars, anytime you can photograph things well and show your craft, it's going to help your business. All right, so, you know, even though you're in photography class right now, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you want to be a professional photographer, but I think being a good photographer can lend itself into a lot of different avenues. And in this case, if you were wanting to be a makeup artist, let's say, and you put makeup on somebody, 
you would want to show them well. And a frame within a frame composition might be one of the things that you use. And so in this case, in this photo, they have framed the face uh, using the arms. When you're making your frame within a frame composition though, the frame doesn't have to go all the way around. So you can see that there's a gap here. Uh, it doesn't really matter that it doesn't go all the way around. It goes most of the way around and that's good enough for it to be called a frame within a frame composition. Here's kind of another example of the same thing. In this case, she's got, or the photographer has, a frame within a frame within a frame. So you've got, again, the first frame is the edges of the photograph. The second frame is the fence right here. And then the third frame um, are her hands. And then uh, her the focal point is her eyes, um, which I think is pretty obvious. Let's say you're just trying to take a really interesting selfie, and let's say your favorite feature is your eyes. You could use this to bring out that feature. Now it doesn't have to be just your eyes. You could, you know, maybe you're just trying to bring out the lips or something, right? You could use this sort of idea to bring out uh, whatever it is you're trying to get the viewer to look at. That's the whole point of this composition, is just to, to make it obvious um, what the focal point is. This one's okay. I think I've seen better versions of this, and actually I'm gonna show you a better version here in a second. If they had more of a focal point in the middle, I think it would have made their photo a little bit better. And so here is an example kind of similar. So we have actually a frame within a frame within a frame within a frame in this one. So like, Again, the first frame is the outside edges of the picture, so that's frame number one. Frame number two is the fence, which is telling us that the focal point is his eye. Frame number three is his actual eyeball, where we see the reflection of the photographer. And then the next frame here is we can see the fence once again in the reflection of the eye, showing us that, you know, mini focal point inside of the larger focal point, which is his eye. So in this case, we've got this girl, she's driving the car. This is, you know, back in the day, or maybe it's just a photo that was set up to look like it was taken a long time ago. In any event, she's driving, and this one makes me feel very concerned. It, it makes me feel worried, it makes me feel scared, because this figure right here, being so blurry, he, he acts as kind of the secondary focal point. The first focal point, I guess, would be her, and he's the second, uh, vice versa. Maybe you look at him first and then her. It doesn't really matter. Uh, nonetheless, this is the most important part of the picture. Without him in here, this is just a more normal picture. But having this figure here and seeing the concern on her face, it makes you feel worried for her. It makes you wonder who this person is and why they're kind of lurking through that window there. Any Again, anytime you can create a mood in your photo, that's a good thing. I would say some things that take away from this photo, in my opinion, are one, I think this is a person right there. I think these are like Adidas pants or something. I don't know, that bothers me that I see whatever that is right there. The other thing that bothers me is there's nothing really strong inside the focal point. There's not even really a focal point. I guess you could say that this is the focal point back here. Um, it does have a frame within a frame composition, so it does hit the mark on that. But if they had put something on the chair, like a flower or something else, if they had somebody sit on the other side over here, any sort of focal point would have helped make this photo a little bit stronger. This one's really strong. I don't know how you'd get that shot, and I don't even know if this shot is real. I'd like to believe it's real, and if it is, holy cow. So they're taking the photo inside like a leaf, a fallen leaf. It acts as our frame. So the leaf is framing these deer right there. It's also a rule of odds photo, which is cool. The colors are all matching, which is nice. So a unified color scheme. So you've got these autumn colors going throughout the entire image. The lighting's really nice. It's silhouetting the deer's antlers, making the antlers darker, you know, giving it contrast. All around that is a spectacular photo. Holy cow, I can't believe somebody got that. 
this is another example kind of a similar thing this time maybe uh it's these two people back here who are in love so the frame again doesn't need to go all the way around in this case the leaf this big leaf goes halfway around and then the rest of the frame is created by these other leaves but the the idea you know that we're supposed to be looking over here so we're looking kind of through this area to see these people right here. Okay, here's a good idea. I believe what they've done here is they've used like a toilet paper roll or a paper towel roll, like those uh, brown rolls inside of paper towels. And they're using it as their frame to make the cat stand out. As a picture, this isn't my favorite picture, but I thought the idea was really cool. And I thought that maybe students could use this for their photography and maybe get something really neat. Um, this. This also acts as a what's called a tunnel composition, which we might talk about later. But but you're looking through this kind of tunnel to to see the um, focal point. And then to kind of add to that here, you could get a shot like this, again, using a paper towel roll. What you do is you get a strong flashlight and you shine it through a paper towel roll and it will create a round shape like that. Your um, flashlight needs to be strong enough to do this. I don't imagine you would get an insect shot like that. That's pretty spectacular that they were able to get that. But for you know an ordinary photographer, you could use this to illuminate whatever it is you're trying to show. So find something cool out there, put it up against a wall and the light acts as your secondary frame. And then again, another cell phone picture, creating a frame within a frame composition, this time taking a picture of traffic. And you can see that the background is, it's got a lot of what's called short depth of field. Short depth of field is anytime you have the background blurry, but the subject is in focus, it's called a short depth of field. Now, the lights though, being round like that, we call that bokeh. Um, which kind of sounds like the Spanish word for mouth or jaw, but in this case, bokeh is, a, it's a Japanese word meaning blurred lights, it, making those lights look round like that. So pho American photographers have adopted that word. So anytime you see that, you might hear photographers refer to that as bokeh. Um, I've also heard photographers call that bokeh. Um, I guess it depends on who you talk to. So both of these shots kind of show the same thing, using your phone to create a secondary frame within your shot. We've got uh, two landscapes. So I don't know that this landscape would be as spectacular if the phone wasn't framing it. If we just had a picture of that landscape, you know, it'd probably be a good shot. But what makes this photo unique is the hand and the phone and the fact that everything else is blurry. Kind of similar with this one. Now, both of these shots use a unified color scheme. So you see the same colors, these same yellows in, case, in this case, going through the entire shot along with these blues and browns. And similarly with this one, with these browns and greens throughout the entire shot along with having that frame within a frame composition makes both of these shots look really good. All right, that's it for this video, everybody. We will talk more about this project in class. Have a good day, everybody.